Right, it's 1 p.m. Welcome to the first session of FSCD, session on uh, rewriting. In this session, we have three presentations, and the first one will be given by Masaomi Yamaguchi of the Hoku University. It's joint work with Takahito Aoto of Niigata University. And the title is a fast decision procedure for uniqueness of normal forms with respect to conversion of shallow term rewrite systems. So Masaomi san, you may okay. start. Can you see this? Okay, I will start. Yes, please start. Okay. Hello, my name is Masami Yamaguchi. Today, I'd like to talk about a distinct procedure for uniqueness of normal forms with regard to conversion of shallow term writing system that runs much faster than the existing procedure. And here is the outline of my presentation. First, I introduce the background of my research. Second, previous work. Third, I explain the main method of our new algorithm. Fourth, experiments and their results. Finally, the conclusion. First, I explain the background of my research field. My research field is Term Writing System, TRS. TRS is one of the well-known models of computation. For example, a term writing system for addition of natural number is following RAD. RAD is consists of two rules. First, zero plus y, arrow y. And second, plus sxy, arrow s plus xy. Here, zero, one, Two are represented by zero s zero s s zero, and zero s plus are called function symbols, and function symbol that takes no argument is called a constant. So zero is a constant. X y are variables. This is example of computation by rewriting. Computation by rewriting is called reduction. For example plus SS0, SS0, that stands for two plus two, is reduced into S plus S0, SS0. And next, SS plus zero, SS0. And finally, SS, SS0, that stands for four, is obtained. A term that cannot be reduced more is called normal form. I assumed here the set of rule is finite and the set of function symbol is finite. The feature of TRS is non-deterministic computation. So ensuring the unique result of the computation is a very important topic for TRS. <clears throat> One of the properties that ensure unique result is uniqueness of normal forms with regard to conversion, UNC. The definition of UNC is for normal form SD, if S and T can be connected by using writing rules from left to right or right to left. Then S and T is the same term. For example, following R is not UNC because A and HX are normal form of R and AR FXY by the first rule of R and FXY arrow GX by the second rule and gx arrow hx by the third rule. So a and hx can be connected by r, but they are not the same term. So they are, they are a counterexample of unc. Now the question arises, is there any procedure to decide whether r is unc? Actually, unc is decidable if adopts some limitations. One such limitation is shallowness. 
variables of each child rules occurs only in steps zero or one. For example, this R is shallow. Here, variables are shown as red. If you replace this A by some variable, then R will be not shallow. Now the clip shows that UNC for shallow TRS is decidable. Now the question arises, does the procedure terminate in a realistic time? We implemented the Radcliffe's method and ran it. This R1 has only one loop, a very simple TRS, but the procedure didn't terminate in 30 minutes. In the next section, I explain more details of this Radcliffe's method. Um, before dealing with UNC for shallow TRS, I explain how Radcliffe made the problem easier. First, I introduced a restriction flatness. Flatness is the height of each side of roots at zero or one. Shallowness only restricts the depth of variables. So flatness is more strict limitation than shallowness. Zin and Burma found a procedure to convert a shallow TRS into a flat TRS, preserving UNC. For example, this shallow TRS can be converted into a flat TRS, adding this new constant C. In this time, UNC property is preserved. So we can now focus on flat TRS. In this slide, I explain how to check the equivalence between terms. Checking equivalence between terms is needed to decide UNC because of the definition of UNC. The definition of UNC is if normal from S and T are equivalent, then S and T is the same term. As you can see, the definition of UNC probability is strongly related to equivalence between terms. To address this, complete equation set ER hat is very useful. We can construct ER hat from a flat TRS R according to following procedure. First, get corresponding equation set ER. ER can be got by replacing arrows into equals. And next, construct a closure of ER with regard to these three rules. Here, I don't look at the details of the rules. The intuition is that if ER have the equation S equal T and T equal U, add shortcut S equal U and repeat this. Beware that all rules in ER hat are flat. Finally, by using this ER, yeah, sorry. Finally, by using this ER hat, SRO star T is decidable. Here, I explain the main theorem of Radcliffe's method. The theorem is this. Let R be non-UNC flat TRS. Then there exists some N such that there exists a counterexample ST whose heights are less equal to max one or C plus N. Here, large C is the set of constants and N equal two star alpha to the power of C minus one and alpha equal maximum number of arguments among function symbols. And this theorem shows us that candidates for counterexample is finite if I identify alpha renamed terms. So, UNC for shallow TRS is decidable. The whole decision procedure of UNC for shallow TRS is this. First, input shallow TRS is converted into a flat TRS and obtain its completion ER hat. Next, make all normal form terms whose heights are less equal to C plus N. And finally, check equivalence of all pair ST and conclude 
UNC or no UNC. This procedure terminates sometime, but it checks a lot of candidates. Check all pair of normal home term up to a certain height. So it takes too much time. Next, I explain our new decision procedure. Here, let's overview the proposed algorithm. We also focus on a flat TRSR. And in this algorithm, we focus on minimal counterexample ST. And the meaning of minimal is about the sum of the size of S and T. In our algorithm, we divide minimal counterexample ST into two main cases. Case one, ST is equivalent to a constant. That is, there exists some constant C and S and T are equivalent to C. And case two, ST are not equivalent to a constant. For case one, we propose constant propagation algorithm. Our algorithm is based on the fact that if t equals c and uh, if t equals c for some constant c, then t can be reduced to c by ER hat writing. Our algorithm incrementally searches normal form of each constant, tracing the inverse direction of ER hat writing. Here, I describe the main algorithm of our new procedure, constant propagation algorithm. I will explain with this R as an example. First, calculate ER hat. And second, divide the constants into equivalent groups and choose the representative element for each group. For example, M and B is equivalent and C is not. So constants are divided into two groups, A, B, and C. If you choose A as the representative element of A and B, the representative elements are A and C. And here, even if you choose B as the representative element of A and B, that leaves no problem. And next, remove equations from ER hat if it contains any non-representative constants. For example, this rule is removed because B is not a representative constant. And remove if neither side is a constant. So this rule shown as red is removed. And here we call the obtained equation Z EL. And finally, construct CPNF table. I will explain in this, uh, sorry, I will explain this in the next slide. Here, I describe how to construct CPNF table. First, list all representative constants for the first column, like this. And next, for each representative constant, list all constants that is equivalent and normal form. For this example, only B is a normal form constant and its representative element is A. So at B like this. And third, build the second column according to EL. These rules shown as red are added to the table. Fourth, replace all constants in the second column by the equivalent normal form term. And if you get new normal form term, save it in the third column. For example, this blue A is replaced by the equivalent normal form term B and obtain ZB. Since ZB is a normal form term, ZB is saved in the table. And repeat this. Look at HXA. 
A is replaced by B and obtain HXB. HXB is a normal form, so save this. And next, look at FAC. A is replaced by B and C is replaced by ZB and obtain FBZB. At the same time, C can be replaced by HXB, so FBHXB is also obtained. Through this CPNF table, we can find the counterexample of UNC that is equivalent to a constant. For example, FBGB equal A equal FBHXB. And GB equal C equal HXB. And HXB is also a counterexample by itself because HXB equal C and X can be renamed and C equal H by B. Here, we read, we read the main theorem to deal with minimal context example that is equivalent to a constant. The theorem is, if there exists a minimal context example that is equivalent to a constant, then there is a context example in CPNF, as I mentioned on previous page. Next, we need to think of minimal context example that is not equivalent to a constant. Here, we assume CPNF has already obtained. And in this case, we construct a set CW. First, gather all equation from ER hat whose both sides are not constants. For example, if ER hat is this, uh, the left side of the first equation is constant B. So remove this one. And second, replace all constants of both sides by the equivalent normal form term that was found in CPNF. For example, we want to replace this B. So look at B from CPNF. Here, we assume HXA is equivalent normal form term of B, so replace B by HXA. Now we obtain GHA, so add it in CW. The third equation of ER hat has no constant, so add this as it is. And here, if there exists ST in CW such that S and T are normal forms and S not equal T, then ST is counterexample of UNC. Finally, we read the main theorem. If a flat TRS R is not UNC, then there is a counterexample in CPNF or CW. And we can now conclude that UNC of shallow TRS is decidable by our new decision procedure. And the whole decision procedure is shown in this figure. Flattening and completion is same as previous work. And from ER hat, we construct CPNF. And if any counterexample is found, output not UNC. And next, construct CW. If there exists no counterexample in CW, we can conclude that the inputted shallow TRS has UNC probably. As you can see, we have removed a lot of cha redundant checking than previous work. Next topic is experiments. We compared the existing procedure and our new procedure. This is except of the experiments. We set the time at 300 seconds. And here, time at is shown as infinity. The result was very good. For these four cases, our procedure runs much faster than the existing one. Uh, look at R6 and 
R7. The difference between R6 and R7 is only one height of the roof, but the existing procedure didn't terminate for R7 because the number of candidates for a counterexample increased so much. On the other hand, our new procedure terminated in a moment. And we conducted an exper experiment for COPS database. COPS contains 146 shallow TRS. <clears throat> and timeout is set to 60 seconds, same as conference competition. Look at the law of timeout. 90 examples were not terminated in the existing procedure. But on the other hand, the number of timeout for our new procedure was only seven. As you can see, our new procedure got better results than the existing procedure. Finally, I'd like to summarize the main findings of this study. In this study, we proposed a new distinct procedure for UNC of shallow time lighting systems and proved its correctness. We analyzed its complexity, but I didn't explain here because of time limitation. We implemented the proposed distinct procedure and existing one. Experimentally confirmed that proposed procedure runs much faster than the existing procedure. This is end of my presentation. Thank you for attention. Thank you for this interesting talk. So if there are questions, you can raise your hand or type in the Q&A box. I will observe what is happening there. And in the meantime, I ask the first question. So this technique is specific for UNC, so unique normal forms with respect to conversion. Do you have any plans or ideas how to extend or modify this to unique normal forms with respect to reduction? Um, okay, this procedure is specific for UNC, for shallow time dating system. So uh, I think I cannot extend this for another, another property. Okay. No raised hands. Okay, I ask a second question. So in the invited talk by René Thiemann, we have heard about the power, the use, and the fun of formalizing uh, results. That was specific to termination, but it also applies to confluence formalization. Do you have any plan? Because this is a complicated procedure, even after your uh, tremendous simplifications. Are you sure this is correct, or do you plan to formalize this in a proof assistant? Like Isabel? Uh, sorry, I cannot understand. OK, let me rephrase. So you are aware of Isabel, the autumn interactive fear improver? Yeah. And in uh, rewriting, uh, in particular termination and confluence techniques, lots of effort is devoted to formalizing uh, results in Isabel. Mm -hmm. In the hope that uh, tools that compete in competitions, uh, the output of tools can be certified so that we can be sure that the uh, output is correct. So as far so as I know, understand. nothing has been done for UNC in that direction. So there is no formalization for UNC. Do you have any plan to work on that? Uh, the question is the for formal verification of this, right. this procedure. Yes. Uh, um, mm, I think I can do it, but... I'm now doing another research field, so I I just just for me I don't I don't uh, formalize this in my plan. Okay. I want to someone do it. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, formalization uh, for Renee in the invited talk. He said it's fun. 
but he has, of course, a 10 year experience in this field. And for beginners, this is uh, very tedious. Okay, we have a question in the Q&A. So Eunice Cooks, maybe I can give you speaking rights if I find you. Right, so there is a question by Yunus, please. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, I was wondering uh, whether it is possible to generalize this method uh, to non-shallow systems. Hmm. Or whether shallowness is a really important, um, a really important thing in this whole. Uh, uh, yes, I think that this shallowness is very important because we cannot use if the term TRS is not, not shallow, then we cannot use complete equations of ER hat. And our procedure is based on this ER hat, so I cannot extend this. And this cannot be extended in principle, or? I don't know, I've been, I, I have the feeling that somehow it, maybe it's possible for linear, but not shallow, but uh, I'm sure you've yeah. looked into it more than I am. Uh, I have. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I think. Uh, What's the question? If you try Thank to you. lift this to non shallow systems, you easily run into indecidability. And there is a, a rather extensive literature on the borderline. And I think this shallow linear, uh, or the word presented here, that's already close to the border of decidability and decidability. Okay. Thank you. Okay, we have time for one more question. Anyone? That's not the case. So let's thank the speaker. Let's see how do we thank the speaker in Zoom. Okay, by saying uh, to Masa Omisan, thank you for this interesting talk. Um, Thank you. Uh, it's the end of the first presentation.